96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Ah, oh, morning Adelaide. How are you? Let me get myself started here. Just thought I'd uh, get a few extra reps in this morning. Beautiful Sunday morning here in Adelaide. Hope I can get you out of the sun. And uh, just so I get a few more reps in just to get the muscles warmed up. Hope you're joining me this morning. Good morning, Adelaide. Good morning, South Australia, Australia, all over the world, whoever's following me this morning. Morning, Patria. Oh, got the sun again. Move myself around here. It is a glorious Sunday morning here in Adelaide. The sun is out. There is hardly a cloud in the sky. You can see I'm at Gazer Footy Park again. The grass is looking good. There are people playing tennis. The uh, playground over here at Gazer, which is way back there, I'll obviously pass on the way around. Um, there's a few kids and parents there. So people are starting to get out and about here in Adelaide. Some of our restrictions from the COVID-19 pandemic have started to be lifted. And uh, it is absolutely glorious here in Adelaide. So wherever you are in the world, I hope it's a good day for you. Hopefully your sun's shining. And if it's not sun shining, I hope you can make your day shine anyway. Uh, if you believe that I just did 100 push-ups, uh, you're a bit gullible. Um, if, you, if you think I did, you might want to check to see if the word gullible was still in the dictionary. Speaking of the dictionary, I was actually thinking again during the week. If a word is spelt wrong in the dictionary, how would we know? Yeah, just wondering. Anyway, morning Yvonne. Morning dudes, how are you guys? Hope you're well. Um, I'm at Gazer Footy Park again, um, talking to one of our members yesterday. I wasn't catching up with the news yesterday, but apparently, hopefully more of our restrictions here in Adelaide will be lifted on June 8. If that's the case, hopefully we can actually get uh, more people out with me together uh, on these walks. I'll head back out to Victoria Park Race Course where I started it all. Um, and that way hopefully we can all get together and actually walk together. I'm just looking around to make sure I'm not going to run into anyone. Um, as I hopefully things can get a bit more back to normal after June 8. Um, I guess a bit of a shout out to the rest of the members in my, in my Lions Club. I'm from the City of Valley Lions Club. If for some reason you are new to joining me, whether that's live now or maybe you watch it later today. Um, we have had a couple of Zoom meetings um, I, it, we'll be having another Zoom meeting for our dinner meeting, or for our dinner meeting, um, that because we have our meetings on the first Monday of the month. So if June 8 is the time where more restrictions are being lifted, like going to the gym and having dinner at restaurants, uh, I guess there'll still be the 1.5 metre distancing. So how those dinner meetings will look, I don't know, but uh, it's fair to say that our next June meeting will be another Zoom meeting. We'll have another guest speaker. Chuck, how are you, buddy? Um, and then uh, we're going to do another working meeting during the during, well, later in that month um, to go through actually any business. What we're thinking, what Patricia's thinking of doing is uh, having a guest speaker only. So that's just giving some heads up. Um, and I guess with those restrictions lifted, we'll wait and see as to whether we have our handover meeting or dinner uh, face to face. It's probably likely that we won't give it how much given there still might be restrictions on actual numbers in a, in a restaurant. Uh, we normally get quite a few tight handovers, so it's probably going to be unlikely that we do that, but uh, it's good to know that restrictions are being lifted. Um, so if June 8th is the date that more restrictions are going to be lifted, then that'll mean, what, a couple more weeks here that I'll be here still at Gazer, and then uh, I'll return our lines and get active walking here on a Sunday morning back out to Victoria Park race course and assuming that all goes well and the restrictions stay lifted then uh, I'll move this Lions Get Active walking section of uh, the program out to other sections of Adelaide and North Adelaide and, and move the venue around a little bit of course as I said before I'll uh, obviously keep everyone up to date whether it's here on Facebook or text messages to my members or other forms of messaging maybe I have to do some sky riding, I don't know. Um, but I'll obviously keep people informed. Um, I hope to have a couple of uh, 
line members join me this morning, but at this point in time they're not here, which is fine, that means I get to be with you lovely people for the morning. As for usual, I hope you're all well. Um, I hope you are still finding ways to get yourselves active. Uh, I know that Petru's been on the treadmill, which is great. Uh, my girls have been watching good old Michelle Bridges videos and getting their exercise in. I know one of my mates at work is getting his exercise on now, which is fantastic. Uh, so hopefully you're finding a way to, to get back out there, get your legs moving. Um, and uh, whether, the, whether these restrictions are on or not, hopefully you're getting out there and getting active anyway. Keeping your minds active, keeping your emotional state active and everything else, which is all good. Um, I actually don't have too much to share with everyone today. Um, so I'm just going to go really on, really on uh, a few things from a club point of view, uh, just to share things with people who are in my club. Um, these videos that I've been doing for the last 10, 11 weeks, however long it's now been, uh, Petru's been uh, nice enough and tech savvy enough. Uh, that we've now got them all on YouTube. So uh, City of Adelaide Lions Club has a YouTube channel. So all of these videos are now on YouTube, so you can watch them anytime you want if you don't have them on Facebook. And obviously, those who are not on Facebook, clearly this message is useless to you. So uh, I'll be getting a message out via either email or text message out to my members, just to let them know that uh, these videos are now on YouTube. We've got a couple of uh, clips of our young Cubs clubs members and presidents on YouTube as well, sending videos out to their members, which is really cool. Uh, they've been very, very creative, far more creative than what I'm doing here. But they've been really creative with their videos, so they're cute, um, but they send a really good message to their, to their members, which is really cool. Um, we've also got, uh, we also sent an email, oh, it was a couple of weeks ago now at least, it just has a few suggestions of what clubs can do still in these times with all the restrictions. Um, I know that our club has done a couple of things which I've mentioned on previous walks. Um, so if your club is struggling for ideas on what to do to still help the community, you may not have to help the community, but you can at least get yourselves up and running or getting readiness for being up and running once the restrictions are lifted. Um, Danny, oh Danny, Coda, how are you mate? From when have I ever called you Danny? Coda, how are you buddy? Um, I know that uh, our club, uh, we've got projects in the mist in the, in the planning stages, so please uh, clubs get out there and make sure you've got your planning for any projects coming up so that once you hit the ground, once the restrictions are lifted, you can hit the ground running. Um, you might need to do, or not, might, you may as an idea get uh, historical records up, to, up and running. Uh, it's a good chance to do all that sort of stuff, clean up banners or find banners of where they can go. I know that a project for our personal Lions Club, not all Lions Clubs have one, but one of the, a, a, an idea for us is that we want to um, get a Lions Den, basically a home for our Lions Club. Uh, we've got so much memorabilia just all over the place, in people's homes, including my home, Patria's parents' home. Um, there's so much memorabilia, so we need to uh, get a home for our Lions Club. Uh, so you can always get in contact with um, various real estate agents and people to find a home. So if your club is also in need of a home, that's obviously something that can be done in these times where you can just at least get on the phone and try and organise stuff like that. Um, I hope uh, members of clubs are still being contacted uh, and staying in the loop with everything that they're... <laughs> I'm, I'm watching... Matt's joined me out here. Pat, how are you? You've been following us for ages. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just trying to read what. C A C L. What's that? Pat, what's C A C L? Uh, C A L C. Let me know, please. Sorry, I don't know. Um, I just saw my mate Matt kick the footy and it zoomed straight over these large nets that are protecting cars and basically nearly hit his own car. So, uh, I mean, he only kicked the ball from just outside the square, but uh, Matty, how are you, mate? Oh, all right now. <laughs> so, uh, so, Matt's joining me this morning. So, I'll have a bit of a chat to Matt. He joined me a couple of weeks ago, which is marvellous. Looking 
nice with his shades on. He's had a big night. How are you, buddy? Not too bad, yourself? Good, mate. Oh, of course, Pat. Sorry, I'm not even thinking straight. We don't, we uh, put our abbreviation of City of Adelaide as uh, COA, so that's why I was a little bit confused there, my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, Petria. Bit slow this morning. I don't need to be thinking too hard. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Adelaide. Matt's joining me for a bit of a walk. He's got the footy. We'll go for a kick of the footy later on. Uh, Will is supposed to be joining us, so we'll see if he joins us. Probably still getting out of bed. Will, to get your butt out of gear, in, into gear, buddy. Take some bets. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so simple ideas of what clubs can do is get uh, your club ar archival stuff um, in order. Uh, get planning of any activities ready to go so that you are good to go once these restrictions are lifted. Uh, please make sure you're still staying in contact with your members. Um, Matt, I know, uh, called a couple of our elderly members which has been really cool, did it off his own initiative, didn't ask, didn't wait for us to tell him to do that which is really cool. Um, and actually now I've got a complete mental blank about what some of the other ideas of this uh, email that were. I'm sure Petria might be able to send a few ideas through, maybe just some messages there on the comments. I guess that just reminds me real quick, if you've been following me I really appreciate it. Um, if you could follow, oh, sorry follow, if you could share these videos on your Facebook pages, I'm, as a club we're really keen to constantly get the lines message out there so if you could share these videos that i do onto your facebook pages let your other friends know about it and that way if people want to join lines they can at least if they want to know more about lines they, they know it's there as a lions association or as a, a volunteer association we need to try and lift more of our profile up um, both that's from a club point of view from a district point of view from a national point of view and even from an international point of view the association does so much great work but it really frustrates me that we're this, we've got this reputation of being the silent achievers and I don't want to be a silent achiever anymore I'd rather people know what we do and it's out there and people have it in their face um, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago the Lions Association is so well widely known and from a reputation point of view we each have a seat on the UN from a humanitarian point of view we do not have a religious affiliation, we don't have a political um, affiliation, everything we do is humanitarian, we don't have a bias towards anyone or any groups, and so that's the reason why we've got a seat on the UN, um, and there are plenty of lions who don't know that. Uh, so we need to get the word of what we do out there, you know, when we had all the bushfire, when we had all the bushfires um, in Australia in, uh, what was that, January and Feb, you know, all the all the other charities which do great work don't get me wrong like red cross and all those guys they got um publicity for what they did and how they helped which is obviously what should be happening they did a great job but i guess it should also be known that lions clubs in various uh states did a massive amount of work as well and donated heaps of money that went straight to the front line of where people needed it and obviously there was that bit of controversy that came out that uh other associations have their admin fees and that's where some of the stuff goes. I'm not trying to be um, controversial in any way, I'm just stating facts that uh, obviously some of those associations have um, paid people, paid employees, so some of the monies that people donated went to those that. Lions as an association are 100% volunteers. Any money that you donate to a club directly or to the Australian Lions Foundation goes directly to where you want it to go. So all the money that was donated for, to the Australian Lions Foundation for those bushfires went directly to the people, whether it was food, whether it was financial assistance, whatever that was needed. And so as an association, I'm really proud of that. I know the volunteers that are in the association are proud of that, but for some bizarre reason, not a lot of people know that that happened because we didn't get the publicity. I remember seeing an advertisement for the bushfire pills and it had about five or six different association logos like your Red Cross and Salvation Army, but lines weren't there, which is really frustrating. And so from a national point of view, that needs to be looked at. Not to be, like I say, to be controversial, it's just a fact of what's going on. Uh, and uh, it's one of those things on my mind to say what we do as a, an association, that we do some awesome work, but we just don't get recognised for it. So anyway, let's not be a bugbear on all this. Um, Hopefully you're getting your exercise out there. If you've been joining me right from day one, I've been doing this now for about 11 weeks. 
you might be getting to the point of increasing what you're able to do. You're either hopefully able to walk faster or walk longer, uh, change the intensity somehow. Maybe you've got the old backpack on your back and you've got some weights in there. Always different ways of making your exercise different. You could have expanded, or sorry, increased your walk to a run or a jog. Maybe you're jogging for half a minute, walking half a minute, jogging half a minute and doing a bit of interval training. You could just be full on jogging by now, which would be great. If you've diversified and got onto the, I'm just gonna move the camera here so it's not to the sun. Um, you could be diversifying, getting on the bike. Uh, you could be weight training with weights at home or even just household goods at home. So if you're doing that, that's fantastic, keep it up. Um, hopefully by the whole COVID restrictions, new habits will be forming. And just in case anyone doesn't know, you can maybe implement this, implement this idea within your family or at work or wherever. It takes about 60 days, 66 days to implement a, a new habit. And so obviously within the restrictions that we've had for as long as we've had, hopefully some of those habits have been formed, sort of been you know, forced upon us. Hopefully you've actually will take those through to when the restrictions are being lifted anyway. Uh, so it takes about 66 days to form new habits. So if you've got into an exercise, uh, routine or program or whatever word you want to use hopefully you might keep it up because it's now part of your habit it's now part of your routine uh, and like I said if you've increased what you're able to do well then that's just obviously a benefit anyway um, I've gone for a few jogs after my walks I don't really like jogging by myself but I'll do it just to keep up the fitness uh, my work keeps me fit anyway for the most part it's pretty physical Matt can attest to that um, but yeah, if you've, increased, if you've uh, been joining me these weeks and uh, you've been able to increase your fitness activity and what you've actually been doing, that's awesome. Give, you a pat, give yourself a pat on the back. Matt loves the gym, so he's hanging for the gym to go to, to open up again. Just move the camera so I don't hit a pole. So he's hanging out for, for the gym to go back. And uh, if you're a gym junkie, hopefully you'll be able to go back soon. Awesome way of keeping fit getting stronger hope you can lift heavy things Matt let me ask you a question I'm, I'm digressing I'm going to go back to, bit, to back to the Lions stuff no a couple of weeks ago I asked about uh, what why you joined Lions yeah. and you gave a marvellous answer well, um, you gave me <laughs> you did go off the cue cards very well you made it look like you were mem memorising everything um, you've actually been a member now since what 2015 15 yeah. or 16? Yeah, 16, yeah. What actually now keeps you coming back? Or continuing, apart from uh, Petrie and I Hassinger? Oh, <laughs> you know, I think you gain uh, some friendships there and ones you probably wouldn't have expected. Yeah, like, yeah. Especially with uh, the older demographic. And just the, yeah, just, I think uh, the family side of it as well. Yeah. You feel like you're part of a, a bigger picture, bigger group. And, yeah, right. Uh, that sort of keeps you going, I guess, as well, and the yeah. fact that you're also making a, a, a difference, whether it's big or small, it's still a difference. So yeah. That's always a good feeling to have. So. Yeah, cool. I was actually, cause I was actually thinking, like, um, I said, Matt's been um, good good enough that he's contacted a couple of our older members just to make sure they're all right in these um, in the, in these times, which has been really appreciated. Uh, we didn't ask him to do that; he did off his own bat, and. Um, but what, surprisingly, a, few week, a week or two right before all this pandemic stuff came out, he and a, one of our other members, Christy, went out and visited a couple of people, and um, Wildy as well. And all we did was take photos of that, just to, you know, document it all. And the response we got was amazing. Uh, from lines across the, quite internationally, we got a bit of, just a bit of kudos for, isn't it great that we've got some of our younger guys just hanging out socially with our older guys? And so, as small a gesture as it was, it actually got a bit of traction. A bit of traction so yeah I was thinking about that the other day so that does make sense um another question then for anyone who isn't a member or is thinking about being a member or hasn't looked at it before is there anything that you'd say I guess for anyone to is there any advice that you'd give for anyone who's thinking about volunteering at all oh I mean um just either come out to one of the meetings or just come out to one of the barbecues I mean it's it's free to help so and then from that you probably get a better idea of what we do and how we go about things especially yeah. asking members there and the yeah. older members have been there for 20 plus years <laughs> we've got some members so, have been there for 45 plus years yeah, as well so, so 
I guess, uh, yeah, coming out and just asking some questions is the yeah. best way to go about it. I mean, first-hand experiences are better. So yep. even if you just observe, you still get a better idea of how things are yeah. operated and get to meet some good people and, yeah, go from there. And, you know, if it's something you think you're interested in or give it a go, because, like I said, it's free. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just a yeah, good feeling helping out. So. I think, yeah, because I mentioned last week, and for those who were watching the video last week, that... Uh, if you've even got just an hour a week, that can be useful to at least our Lions Club, the City of Adelaide. But most Lions Clubs will appreciate that as well. And I was just going to quantify that from the point of view of if you, if you provide, say, four hours in a month, like one, one time in a month, well, my arm's actually getting sore. If you can spare, say, four hours in one block once a month, then that's hugely helpful. So if that's the sort of time commitment or that you time restrictions that maybe you've got, then please think about donating your time and volunteering your time with the Lions Club. Um, it's quite possible that uh, if you can't, say, de designate an hour a week or four hours a month, every month, then maybe there's a project that happens in a specific time of the year. I know that our Lions Club started talking about uh, getting our cake sales um, or having a bit more of a strategic plan with our good old Christmas cake sales, the Lions, the famous Lions Christmas cakes and puddings. And so that's not going to happen for another few months yet, really. So if you're interested in just doing that, then you don't, you don't have to do squat for the first, you know, six months of a year. You can just help out with that project, which is obviously in the second half of the year leading up towards Christmas. Um, as a club, most Lions clubs sell mints. So all you can do is put a, a tray of mints, say, in your workplace. Make sure you keep that stocked up. Bring in the money to your club. There's your contribution. It can actually really, really be simple stuff like that. Or you can go the whole hog, be really involved like Petrie and myself, and you start looking into leadership of the club, uh, which is obviously running the club, making sure you've got members involved. Maybe you want to coordinate a program. If you've got an idea of how you'd like to serve the community, this is for anyone who's watching, not just a line. If you've got an idea of how you want to help and serve as a community, my recommendation is obviously see if a Lions Club currently does it, because then you've got an easy in. If a club, if there are no clubs that currently do what you'd want to do, then Lions are a good platform, a great platform, to get your idea off the ground. We can provide uh, the insurance required to do sort of any sort of projects. So if you align yourself with a Lions Club, with the project that you might want to do, then joining a Lions Club could be the catalyst or the platform you need to get it up and running. We've got members right there and volunteers that can help your cause. You'd obviously put it towards our members. We put it towards our members. Everything that we do as a club and everything any Lions Club does is member driven. If members don't vote on doing it, it doesn't happen. So it's not about leadership making decisions or all the decisions. It's about all the members making decisions. They vote who they want into a club. That happens at district level. That happens at um, national level, that happens at international level, there are all these different roles uh, within Lions um, and they all have to be voted upon by the members. So there's nothing done without the members having input. And so if you join a club, you, got, you have direct access and direct input as to what goes on in your club. Now some clubs obviously there are some personalities uh, that don't always allow it to happen, but that's the, um, that's the foundation of how a club should run. Um, and so yeah, so if you've only got, if you're only able to spare an hour a week or say a couple of hours in a fortnight, or even if it's one hour a fortnight, and you want to volunteer with the club, come and speak to us, speak to Matt. City of Adelaide Lions Club is a great place to start. There are other great clubs across Adelaide. There are 20, there are 23 clubs in Metropolitan Adelaide just from our district. There's another 10 clubs 10 or 15 clubs in dis District C2, which are Metropolitan Adelaide. And then in our district, there's another 35 clubs across the country, uh, across the, in country towns, such as Gawler, Cooper Pedy, Cowell, Two Wells, um, Port Augusta, Port Piri, Port Lincoln, all these clubs all over South Australia. And that's just within our district. So. Surely there is a club near you where you can help. So if you're interested in joining a club, you've got a few hours to spare, 
give us a call. Send me a message here on on Facebook. Uh, if you go to our face, if you go to our website, you can see contact details of a couple of members that you can get in contact with um, and get yourselves involved. Like I say, even if it's for an hour, it doesn't matter. We've got things that can be done in that time. We've got plenty of different projects that hopefully appeal to different people. And even if our club doesn't have a have a project that appeals to you, surely there is a club near you that does have a project that will appeal to you. All the clubs do, do their own different projects. They don't. They do some things that are similar. But they also do some things that are completely distinctive to their own club. So at this point in time, we're the only club doing an active Alliance Get Active program. So this program is all about raising awareness uh, about diabetes and well and well-being. And so the well-being portion is us obviously us getting outside, getting our physical activity, and uh, we want to show the city of Adelaide, the members, the community of Adelaide, that we as Lions are out there just trying to promote what we can, try and promote good activity, try and promote physical activity for our well-being. And so this isn't a fundraiser. This isn't um, what you'd call a typical project. This is just purely an activity where we get out. Obviously once most of the guidelines are restricted, it's a social activity. So if you need someone to talk to, you and just want to get outside. If you need that little bit of motivation to get off your butt, to get exercising, hopefully we can become just purely that platform or that option for you to come out and get some exercise. Um, of, with, with this program we're raising awareness about diabetes so again the idea sort of stemmed from a couple of our members having diabetes and they need to manage their, their personal scenarios and if this provides an option for people to manage their diabetes if you've got it then this is an option for you please make sure you get some guidance from your from your health practitioner whoever that might be but we're just providing an option for those who've got diabetes to get outside get some easy exercise you can walk as far as you are able to and then you can slowly increase that as time goes on. That's the whole point of what we're doing here. We're just providing that option for those. So hopefully when these restrictions are over, we can have our social group out there again, walking. And uh, hopefully just making a visual difference. I hope people here at Gazi can see every week that I'm out here in my red jacket or my red top um, as part of Lions doing this. And, and there are a few regulars here, so hopefully they're starting to recognize you. I haven't said load of them yet. Scotty, how are you, mate? Candida, how are you, mate? Um, so yeah, and even if, if so, if you wanted to join our club just to purely walk with us and spread the word, again, we would love to have you here with us as part of the club. Um, I mean, for those who don't know that aren't members, there is a fee to joining our club if you do want to become a full-fledged member. But like any sort of joining any sort of club, there's always a fee. It's only 100 bucks for a year. That is cheap as it's cheaper than going to the gym if you, even if you came for a walk with us, even though walking is free. Um, there is a fee. If you want to be a full-fledged member to get all your voting rights and everything else. But if you want to volunteer and spend some time with Lions, you can be a friend of Lion. Doesn't mean you have to be a member. You can be a friend of Lion, and we would obviously always welcome your help to whatever projects we've got. Um, I reckon I'm rambling on, rambling on a little bit this morning, so I'm probably going to cut it there. Maddie's just dobbed one from about 45. Sentiment. Just got a bit. <laughs> uh, so I reckon I'm going to leave it there. Scotty Dow Gleesh, I reckon you should come out to Gazer, mate. Kick the footy with us if you're able to, depending on how your hamstrings are, old man. Um, otherwise, Candida, come out and join us too. Coda, come on out. Probably kick the footy for a little bit here, which means I get my run on. I'd rather play a sport than just go for a jog, but uh, I have gone for jogs after walks because I know that I should. And I promoted it, I know it was good for me, I don't need to do it as well. I play a bit of social basketball as well. Obviously when these restrictions are over, and man, am I gonna be unfit. So it's probably worthwhile I get a bit more running in anyway. So, probably gonna leave it there. Matt, is there anything else you wanted to share at all? Go Eagles. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Go Eagles, yeah. Matt controversially goes to the West Coast Eagles while he's an Adelaidean. But that's all right, we'll love him anyway. So, uh, next week I'll probably still be here at Gazer. Um, what I'll probably do is ask Lynn to do another yoga session for the following week. Um, members, if you've got any questions, uh, like I said, we'll let you know what's happening with our dinner meeting coming up, our next Zoom meeting's coming up. Um, cheers, buddy. So we'll keep you informed with all that sort of stuff. Um, if you're a friend of mine and you're following me here, really appreciate it. I know you don't have to do it, but I appreciate you coming out and just watching me. But I hope you're not just watching me. I hope you're getting yourselves out there and actually exercising yourself. There's no point in me doing this and you feeling inspired if you don't actually do it. So I hope you're actually getting out there and getting your exercise somehow, some way. I hope you're keeping, finding ways to keep your minds fresh 
and keeping your mental health in check. If your mental health isn't in check, that's okay. Please find some help. Gail, how are you? Gail, I worked with back at Salisbury East. How are you going? I hope you are well. You caught me just at the end, but I'm glad you've joined me. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to leave it there. Matt and I are going to keep the footy for a bit more so I can actually get some running in. Um, I'll make sure I stretch up properly because last time I did that, man, oh man, was I saw the next day. <laughs> so, uh, Daniel Lill, I apologise if I walk like a 60 year old tomorrow. Well, that's just walking your age. Hey, hey. Wildy, you better have a good excuse for not joining us this morning. <laughs> I'm sure you'll make up for it. There are heaps more people here at Gazer Footy Club. There's plenty of people now playing cricket. There's people on the exercise equipment. So get outside. It's a gorgeous day here in Adelaide. If you're watching from anywhere else, if you're following me from England or America, as I know people have been. If you're from elsewhere in South Australia, like Yvonne was saying hello, thank you for joining me. I hope it's uh, sunny where you ever, wherever you are. Look, have a great Sunday. Have a great rest. Have a great rest of the day. Stay well. If you've got any questions about anything, send me, a, um, send me a message on Facebook or private message me during the week. Happy to answer them, ready for next week's walk. And hopefully we'll get our walks back out to uh, Victoria Park Racecourse soon where we can all walk together. Matt, I want to thank you for joining me this morning. You're welcome. It is appreciated. Good. Adelaide, have a great day. The rest of the world, have a great day. Be kind to one another. And uh, I will see you next week.